What's going on guys? JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City video. Today we're going to be doing my match review of Manchester City's opening Premier League game victory over Burnley at Turf Moor by three goals to nil. Before we do digest all the talking points from this game, make sure like always if you are enjoying the content, do subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget social media links. They're in the description below and sliding across at the bottom of the screen if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter and Instagram. Email also in the description too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships or any videos or any general business inquiries. TikTok link also in the description if you want to go and follow me on there. Also, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. 100 likes is the aim. And do let me know your thoughts, what you make of this victory in the comments below. So we're going to dive right into this video. Uh, and firstly, we're just going to have a look at statistics. I'm not the biggest fan of statistics I don't always think that they tell the true story of the game uh, and they don't really tell you too much about the game but they do always give you uh, a good fair reflection about how the game has gone for Manchester City in particular because normally when I'm dealing with City and dealing with statistics I, I can already guarantee that nine times out of ten we've had more possession we've had more shots we've had more shots on target uh, there's nothing really to, to analyse there and that's pretty much the case here City 66% possession so kudos good uh, to start as we mean to go on is what that's suggesting to me 17 shots 8 on target 3 goals clinical enough for Manchester City uh, and very much a case of job done Burnley 34% possession 6 shots in total just 1 on target uh, tested Edison just once not really pushing Manchester City's defence that much uh, and uh, what the stats don't really show was there was a couple of shaky moments for Manchester City where Burnley didn't capitalise in particular one City had gone 1-0 up uh, there was a little shaky spell between that second goal where Burnley were forcing the issue and causing problems for Manchester City and I think once City got that killer second second goal that we're always looking for we hit our stride and uh, that the game was done from there and Man City managed to wrap that up with a third goal uh, in the second half uh, there's nothing really uh, much else to, to dig into really there for, for Manchester City I thought defensively as I said there was a couple of shaky moments but other than that uh, this early part of the season I thought as a whole was a pretty good defensive display from Manchester City we've kept a clean sheet we limited Burnley to just one shot on target um, fair, fair credit fair enough I'm happy with that we didn't have a John Stones we didn't have a Ruben Diaz it was always going to be potentially quite difficult and the fact that we've come out unscathed with a really good performance and a really good victory here causes me no concern there whatsoever uh, I think I am left a little bit concerned about Kevin De Bruyne going off in the first half with uh, an injury which I'm going to presume is his hamstring that he was having some problems with towards the back end of last season he didn't feature much in pre-season with Manchester City uh, and I just feel like with how important and how good Kevin De Bruyne is Man City have been keen to get him back ASAP and I'm, I'm not too sure that that was the best thing to do here uh, and I can sense here that Kevin De Bruyne may be out for a, a few few more weeks waiting for further clarification from Pep on that and I think uh, this reiterates to me not having a John Stones not having a Ruben Diaz uh, Kevin De Bruyne going off injured reiterates to me that there is a core spine for Manchester City there in our current squad when it's not there that it could potentially as the season goes on cause us some problems and I mean this is no disrespect to Burnley but uh, with the squad that City have got available to them uh, Burnley weren't going to cause Man City problems with these players being out however there are Premier League teams out there and there are top European teams out there as we digest and go on with the season that may just be able to capitalise upon Manchester City and so the point I'm making here that I'm trying to stress is I still think there's work here for Man City to be done in the transfer market it's brilliant that we've uh, signed Yoshko Gavardiel. Uh, it's brilliant that we brought in Mateo Kovacic. I think it's tightened up Man City's defence. It's tightened up defensive midfield for Manchester City. I just have a little bit of a concern there when it comes to our build up play offensively and our ability to create opportunities. No problem with that today, but I didn't think Burnley were the best defensive team and going up against a tight knit uh, defensive team could have been 
a little bit more frustrating this game for Manchester City if that was what we were going up against and uh, we won't really get our answer as to whether I'm right or not with what I'm saying until City go up against some of these defensive teams and uh, Manchester City of course don't have a Kevin De Bruyne available to as to uh, who's going to take up that uh, opportunity and who's going to take up the, 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 the string so to speak to be able to create them opportunities for Manchester City because at the end of the day Riyad Mahrez brilliant at creating opportunities he was a player that knew where the back of the net was he was always grabbing goals and uh, getting assists Ilkay Gundogan was the same another player that uh, in big games in particular stepped up in the right place at the right time and time will tell us to whether we need to replace these players or not but what I want to stress is that whilst the transfer market is open, I still feel like in terms of our depth and uh, doing what's best for the team with the likes of McAtee and Palmer, in my opinion, needing to be playing regularly, I don't think that's going to happen this season at Man City. And because of that, loaning them out. And the only way we're going to make that happen is making new additions to the team so these players can leave so that they can go and prosper somewhere else and come back to us at some point in the future rather than just keeping them here and getting as bit part players getting 5, 10, 15 minutes here, which ultimately, coincidentally, even with injuries, is what happened with McAtee and Cole Palmer. Great for them to come on and get some minutes, but to me, most of the Premier League teams, they walk straight into that starting eleven, and that's exactly what they need right now in terms of their, uh, their development, because that's where they're at. So to me... Whilst it's great to pick up the three points, I do feel like there are some teething point, uh, teething problems there for Manchester City that do need to be ironed out before September 1st and transfer deadline day. Uh, and it would be good to go out there uh, and try and find that long-term Riyad Mahrez replacement and try and find a midfielder that will help Man City uh, in creating opportunities and uh, help with the ball distribution uh, and going out there and getting that sorted. That, to me, is uh, has to be priority for City in the transfer market. It was evident to me anyway on, on the field and what I was seeing today uh, with uh, Manchester City's squad that uh, were not a complete unit. But we have picked up three points. We scored three goals. Erling Haaland's back in amongst the goals. There's plenty, in my opinion, to be positive about. Man City, renowned for getting off to pretty slow starts. Haven't got off to a slow start here. And they've pretty much gone with the same attitude as what they've had from last season, which is we're here to prove a point, to win this game, to score goals. And that's exactly what they've gone and done. And that was a good all-round team performance from Manchester City. And matching how we played in this game on Wednesday, I'm confident we come away with the European Super Cup. And I think right now at these beginning parts of the season, you can't really look too far beyond who you're playing in your next game. And that has to be the priority right now until you're really getting into your rhythm and it gets into September, October time and you start playing every three to four days. And whilst you've got these extended periods where you're only playing once a week other than this next midweek coming up for the European Super Cup, Man City are playing once a week so you can afford to just focus one game at a time uh, and try and get th take things in your stride and try and move on from there. Uh, and to me, uh, this, was a, this was a really good performance from Man City. It showed tremendous bottle to uh, make sure that we were over what happened and last week with the disappointment of conceding so late on to not win the Community Shield to not play that many games in pre-season as well. We've had a lot less time than other teams have to prepare for the Premier League season so the fact that we've really hit the ground running here is a really positive, really good start here for Manchester City. Uh, I do want to mention a couple of points that have come from this game. Firstly, Erling Haaland and Pep Guardiola half-time and uh, having a go. I think it was all about uh, distribution from Bernardo Silva going back to my point that Man City they want to get the best out of Erling Haaland need to make sure they've got players that are assisting Erling Haaland that are finding them uh, balls through the through balls the threaded passes the cute little passes in and here and there uh, and releasing Erling Haaland to where he wants the ball to me we're, we're lacking a little bit of a playmaker in our team never really replaced David Silva so to speak and it'd be good to be able to bring somebody who's got some really good feet who can uh, just maneuver that ball good with the distribution knows when it needs to go back knows when it needs to go forward knows how to thread them balls into Erling Haaland, play them through balls in and release Erling Haaland with well-timed, uh, uh, with the correct... Uh, oomph so to speak on the ball to release Erling Haaland so it's not too light and it's not too heavy for him and you're getting it just right and uh, to me 
uh, Man City should be spending big to make sure that that uh, position is filled in our team because to me there's a gaping hole and it's even more gaping when there's no Kevin De Bruyne there. It's it's noticeable in my opinion and I, fe I, I fear a tight nicked defensive team today this could have been very frustrating for Manchester City but on another more positive note our set pieces look strong they look good look pretty tight nicked together as a group I'm, there's a lot to be positive about there's a lot to be positive about there's lots to look forward to going forward with first competitive game it's always going to be like this and the fact that we've won 3-0 is a really good start to the season for Manchester City now we want to take this momentum into the European Super Cup and go and win a trophy that we've never played in that we've never featured in before that we've never won before to go out there and continue to make history but in, in terms of wanting to achieve our goal which is to make history and become the first ever team to be four times consecutive Premier League champions starts today starts this evening and with a really positive result which tonight sends Man City top of the Premier League albeit game one in and we're the only team that have uh, <laughs> we're the only game that's played but still Man City is setting the precedent there to everybody else to say this is the standard that we're looking for and if you want to beat us you're going to have to play a really good game so I consider that a statement sent out and I think the last talking points from this game pitch invader what's going on there someone throwing a lighter at Rico Lewis what's going on there doesn't paint Burnley in a good light in their first opening game back into the Premier League uh, with things happening there I, I, I don't know Friday night people had too much to drink losing their heads I'm not sure. No real excuses for it, though. Uh, I think Burnley have just tried to make it as hostile and as unwelcoming for Manchester City as possible. But when we grab a goal after four minutes, I think Man City have not found it unwelcome and they found it relatively comfortable in this game. And as it is, City gone on, picked up in what is, my, in my opinion anyway, a really positive, really good result here with three goals, three points, couple of goals for Erling Haaland. Rodri loves grabbing a goal as well. I'm very happy with that and I'm looking forward to going forward uh, and putting in an even better performance now against Sevilla midweek. Hopefully injuries to Kevin De Bruyne won't be too serious. Hopefully we'll be able to get uh, Ruben Diaz, John Stones back, ASAP as well. That would be really good. Uh, and I'm excited with Yoshko Gavardio making his Manchester City debut as well. Seeing more minutes from him as well. So to me... Super. Good start to the season, in my complete honest opinion. So there we go. That has been my thoughts. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, don't forget as well uh, to uh, leave a thumbs up. 100 likes is the aim. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new around here. Plenty more Manchester City content to come. Also, don't forget social media links. They're in the description below and slide across at the bottom of the screen. If you want to go and follow me on my Twitter and Instagram. Email also in the description too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships or any videos or any general business inquiries. Don't forget as well, TikTok link in the description if you want to go and follow me on there. And on a final word, I wanted to send out a big apology for my live watch along. Didn't really go according to plan. Got off to a good start through the build-up to the game. Got to the first three, four minutes fairly decent. And then things just kind of went downhill and my laptop just weren't having it, weren't, weren't happening with the live watch along unfortunately, I'll try and sort out the teething problems for you guys ready for a live watch along on Wednesday, hopefully we'll get all that sorted I'll work hard on that, you have my word so apologies for that one and thank you to everybody that joined me for that one, uh, and I'll see you all again real soon, so I've been JSGC thank you everyone for watching, I do hope everyone is safe and well, peace, ciao for now